President and as Commander-in-Chief, I take full responsibility for all our counterterrorism operations, including the one that inadvertently took the lives of Warren and Giovanni. I profoundly regret what happened. On behalf of the United States government, I offer our deepest apologies to the families. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was the president earlier today apologizing for the two uh, hostages that Al Qaeda was holding that were killed in our counterterrorism attack, uh, a strike. Uh, we didn't know those two hostages were there, one an American and one an Italian. Joining us now is Jed Babin, contributing editor to the American Spectator, former Undersecretary of Defense for President George H.W. Bush and co-author of the Sunni Vanguard. Uh, Jed, there's the book there on your, on your uh, TV screens, folks. All right, Jed, um, I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a terrible tragedy uh, that these uh, two people were killed. Uh, some say we've known about this since uh, after it happened, and there was going to be a story in the Wall Street Journal, so the president had to get out ahead of it. Um, I don't know. Would, a, would a, a phone call to the families had been more appropriate and instead of making this big deal and apologizing? I mean, it wasn't our fault. It's the animals known as al-Qaeda that, that hide people like this and use them as human shields. Well, that's true enough. And I think that, frankly, a phone call to the families would have preceded something like this. We don't know if it right, did or not. Right. I, I assume that they would have done that. Uh, and if they hadn't, that would have been a big mistake. But at this point, all you can say is you're right. I mean, the people who are holding these hostages are responsible, not us. And we are entitled to strike these guys, you know, whenever we find them. That's really the point here. And, you know, the president is spending so much time and energy trying to close Gitmo. We ought to be filling it up with those guys if we captured more and got the intelligence they hold in their heads, we'd be a lot better off. Well, what's, what frightens me is that um, Josh Ernest said today that uh, counterterrorism operations are continuing, but they're under review. I mean, you know, to me, they, they would take any opportunity they can to say, well, you know, we can't, we can't kill the bad guys anymore because we might hit a, a good guy that they're hiding in the basement. Well, they're pretty erratic on this thing. I mean, we've seen... The Al Awlaki strike a couple of years ago killed an American citizen, although he desperately needed to be killed. Uh, you know, the fact of the matter is the president, and this is not unusual for President Obama, he's pretty erratic on these things. And again, he wants to close Gitmo instead of capturing these guys and, you know, getting the intelligence that might benefit us. Right. So yeah, right. It, it's a real bad choice either way you slice it. We need to get more of these guys captured and putting them back into Gitmo. Yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. If we... Uh... If we captured them, uh, then, of course, we'd have to, according to Obama, give them lawyers and they wouldn't talk anyway, so we would never get the uh, information out of them. Let's, let's talk about Iran. What, what did you call it before when we were up there? Iran Gate? Uranium Gate. Uranium Gate. I'm sorry. Yes, Uranium Gate. Talk about that because nobody's talking about that today. Well, um, the New York Times had a pretty good story on it yep. this morning. And, yep. you know, it shows, it, it shows the, uh, the Clintons and, you know, you got to, you got to admire the Clintons. I mean, it's less entertaining than the Sopranos, but it's pretty much the same storyline. <laughs> so, you know, the, the point is here, these guys do what they always do. They lie, cheat, steal, they take bribes. And, you know, we don't know the, the tenor of this thing, really. But in all seriousness, this is something that demands a serious investigation, which will not be done because President Obama and Eric Holder, Loretta Lynch, whoever's at the attorney general's office, is going to not investigate the Clintons because, hey, they're Democrats. She's running for president. That's all they need. And to this give all her. has to do with a contributor to the Clinton Foundation. Well, not just that. I mean, there's a 2.35 million, again, according to The New York Times, contribution to the Clinton Foundation by the Russians. Right. And they certainly also gave Bill Clinton a $500,000 fee for a speech that was just at the same time that the State Department, through the Committee on Foreign Investments of the United States, was determining whether this buyout of the Canadian company, the uranium mining company, was going to be permitted. So, you know, this is the same thing. It's, it's not, we used to deal with this in the Pentagon. We'd always say everybody has to avoid the appearance of impropriety. Well, this is a lot more than the appearance. I mean, this thing fairly well reeks of corruption. I wonder if this is in the book that's coming out or, or not? We don't know that yet. Well, the, some of it is, and the New York Times story says that some of the reporting they did resulted from the information they got from Peter Schweitzer, and they did their own reporting, and now we've got How Howell and Howie Dean out there saying, well, the New York Times, which is, of course, the Democrats' home, <laughs> the Democrats' think tank, 
you know, that they're now saying Howland Howie Dean is out there saying, well, the, the New York Times is guilty of sloppy reporting. <laughs> it is it is precious, isn't it? I mean, it's it's always trash the uh, messenger, whether it's uh, Linda Tripp or whether it's, uh, uh, you know, the Schweitzer or the or the New York Times. It doesn't matter. Well, it's just hilarious to me that the Democrats think we ought to go uh, you know, back to the future. You know, it's really going to be a great value to this country to, you know, do an archaeological dig and revive the <laughs> 1990s. Yeah, absolutely. Jed, always good to talk to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, take care. Jed Babin, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, up next, Steve Forbes will be here. We'll talk to him about Hillary. Uh, but first, uh, we're bringing back our viewer call-in segment. Uh, and if you want to join us, email us at callsteve at newsmax.com. 